Maelstrom, an ill wind. But why, Oliver, why, because our billings are down more than 20%. We're looking for savings all round. It's simple as that. So I am fired, conditions are made you redundant. It's not quite the same thing. What's the difference? That check I've been giving you for a year's salary, a kind of reference you'll get. That's the difference. Still, the elbow is it, isn't it? Kathy, I'm sorry, really am. But they're not the only one we're having to do this to. When things pick up again, well, you're still available. You want to come back here? Thanks, and meanwhile, there are other agencies, and you're a bloody good accountant executive. Yes, I am, but I might not get fixed up for months. Of course, I could always start up on my own. That would be bad timing just now, I would say. Not if you kept it small and specialised. OK, supposing you got something like that off the ground. What about capital? Have you thought of the kind of money you would need? Too much otherwise. I would have done it, done it a couple of years ago. Listen, this isn't the end of the world. With your track record, everything will come good for you. Even better than here. I've said on that. Just a little patience, that's all you're going to need. First off, I think if I were you, I'd take a holiday. I just started one, Oliver, haven't I? You know what I mean? Get away for a while. Well, maybe I will, but most immediately, more immediately, I've got a better idea. Oh, what's that? Get well and truly smashed. Oh, your father's name was Richard Stephen Dorrell. You are born in Oslo on 16th of November. 1955, to Kurtzman Durrell, Dinigra. Yes, that's right. Both your parents are deceased. Your father died in 1962, your mother in 1980. You bought the certificates for me? Did me? Yes, as you asked. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Durrell. Someone's, someone's left me something in their will. You guess. It wasn't difficult. Possibly learn something to your advantage. Don't think solicitors said things like that anymore, Mr. Strogdad. We grow no, no less cautious with the advent of electrical typewriter, I assure you. But you're absolutely right, I'm happy to say. For many years we handled illegal affairs. The country of a group of Norwegian capital companies called Jarara Industries. Three months ago, Mr. Hamajara, Ham, Hadajamara, Jotoria, the chairman and managing director, died. Shortly after his death, he received his letter from his lawyer in Asterson. Where? Oh, I'm sorry, I assumed. Uh, there we are. That's it, on the west coast. That's where Mr. Jorara lived, with many whose business interests are based. Now, knowing to, according to the letter, among the other beneficiaries of Mr. Jorara's will, was Catherine Elizabeth Durrell, whose last address was 16 High Bank Road, Guildford. That was my mother's address. I left there some years ago, so I understand we've got the information. It wasn't difficult to trace you. So what have I inherited then? A set of spoons? Rather more than that, Mr. Rail. In fact, a rather so, so, man, so substantial bequest. Mr. Jory has left you property in consisting of two houses, outbuildings standing in all 24 hectares of land, about 60 acres of fish processing factory. You're not serious, I promise you. Solicitors don't joke about things like this. My well, warmest congratulations. You will, of course, have to go to Astrid to start, finally establish your claim on the estate. But that will be a formality. Meanwhile, though, if you have any questions, just one. Why did Hadrima Joanna mention me his will at all? I never heard of him. Flight number six, eight, six, SK516 from London to Bunkin has now landed. Kevin R. through there into the Roman passage. Thank you. Could you please tell me what time we arrive in Asimed tomorrow morning? A moment, please. Excuse me. All being well, we should be at Asimed about a quarter past twelve. Oh, thank you. All being well. Or do you think you need any, have any fear of the weather? The forecast is good. All I see, I thought we might not settle on time. That is unheard of. The coastal steamers are never late, even Bergen. Every night, 11 o'clock precisely. Thank you. Oh, please, won't you join me? Thank you. Good morning, good morning. Do you sleep well? Yes, rather well. You're making a round trip to Cardenas and back, are you? No, I'm going to as far as Assisted. Oh, is that so? Coffee, tea? Coffee, please. Thank you. It's originally I was going to fly up. 
When I was booking my ticket to London, agent, travel agent told me about this coastal steamer service. It sounded a lot, a much more interesting way to make the journey. So here I am. For me, unless I'm in a great hurry, which fortunately is seldom in the case. This is why, I, this is the only way to travel this part of Norway. Are you going far? Like, like you, I need to ask for that. Oh, really? Is that where you, where you live? Yes, I'm happy to say. That's well, what's it like? I've been there before. I've never been there before. No, never. It's only a small town, but it's very beautiful. And then, of course, I'm prejudiced. Oh, forgive me. My name is Astrid, Dr. Astrid. Catherine Darrell. Yes. Well, to be honest, knowing you expect, expected today from the beginning and soon, you said you were leaving the ship in Astrid. I thought that was a possibility who you might be. I'm oh, sorry, I don't understand. You, you will think... When I tell you that I've been a doctor for the Joanne family for great man, man white years, but also a close friend who enjoys her confidence, how oh, I see. Also, since I too served a request, I was present from the Herod Anajar's Joel's will was read. Well then, I am very pleased to have met you like this, doctor, because perhaps you could explain to me why a complete stranger, someone I never laid on, eyes on, would leave, left any should have left me anything. He was unknown to you, totally, until two weeks ago. But your parents then, must surely, they must surely are both dead. Oh, forgive me, please. I know that neither of them knew to our either. I can't really remember my father. My mother only died four years ago. She certainly never mentioned him to me. Not even a passing reference. Yet she's the only possible contact between, because he's Norwegian. What part of Norway was she? Oslo. What was her name before she married Inca? Christine Inca. Well, as far as I know, Gerardos certainly have no blood ties of anyone of that name. Oh, any other kind of ties. I telephoned my grandparents in Minnesota. My grandfather was a chemist in Burry, he knows a lot. He offered a job in America, so he and my grandmother emigrated a year, a year or so before I was born. And there they... And they're mystified as I am, because the name Jarola means nothing whatever to them. Perhaps I have not have a branch of your family. The only relatives I have are ones here, there. Then there can be no question about it. Clearly, the legacy is meant for you in your own right. But you don't leave, but you don't leave a factory and a house and 60 acres of land to someone you never met or had anything to do with. No, there has to be, be a link of some kind. When did, when did your father and mother marry? Your mother has been living in Oslo. Until then, has she? Yes, that's where they had were well, married, where I was born. And when was that? Three years later, November 1955. Of course, I see you're getting it. Possibility has crossed my mind too, but I don't believe it. If you had met my mother, you know why. That's more. She told my father. Again, forgive me. That certainly was an unworthy fault. Even so, I wouldn't mind betting it's a fault that's in mind. Good few people right now. So you... There were more obvious explanation. They had Jabar Jaroni. I never was never a man for obvious to tell me about Jaroni. He's a good man, but a private person. Even I, who was his friend, could not say that I really knew him. When his wife died, well, he seemed to draw back even more than those around him. But then his death was a terrible blow. In her journey, he was never the man for the obvious. Tell me about your only. He was a good man, but never, but, but a very private person. Even I, who was his friend, could not say I really knew him. And when his wife died, well, it seemed to draw back even more from those around him. But then her death was a terrible blow to him. Did you ever, did they ever have children? Two daughters, Ingrid and Anna Marie. Anna Marie is the older of her two years. She'll be 28 this year. Are they married? Ingrid is. You feel you're robbing them of their inheritance, is that it? Well, I am part of it anyway. It's a very small part, I assure you, and they will not miss it. When he was 26, Jody was no, had nothing. He was the only son of a poor family. He worked on one of the fish factories. By the time he was 35, though, he owned that factory. Half of Astrid too. That was the beginning. Today, the dozen companies 
the German industry has overturned each year a million years of Krona. Between them, Anna Marie and Ingrid, their husbands, Lars Nilsson, now own Gerard Industries. You see, my dear, you're probably no one. There are moment, there were moments where I still find it difficult to set. He's gone, you know. But then he was a remarkable man in every way. It seemed indestructible. What was it then? A heart attack? No, nothing like that. Had you had a great height, had the heart rate of a heart man half his age, would have envied the constitution of a bull elephant in the prime of life. I can't remember him being ill. He was a very kind of patient. What happened to him? It was an accident. He took a boat out and flew filled a bone. I really ought to have not done. There was a storm blowing up. He got into difficulties and was washed overboard and drowned. He was greatly missed, not by his family or friends, by the whole town. To his end, we've arrived. It's a satisfied. Is this who we're waiting for, I think? Alfred Dorel? Catherine, I've become friends on the trip. Let me introduce you. This is Ingrid. This is my her husband, Lance Nielsen. Hello, welcome to Astrid. Very, we're very pleased to meet you. How do you do? The solicitors in London wrote to Berlin Livera and told him that, that when you were coming, Mr. Lagra is our lawyer. Oh, yes, I see. Can we give you a lift, Anna, Arnie? It's such a short distance. Oh, thank you. The walk will do me good. Well, goodbye. Hope you meet again. So do I, Doctor. We're giving a small party for Craffin tonight for our house. You and Liv will come, won't you? Thank you. We'd like to. Until then, adieu, adieu. Well, shall we go then? You're still, you're still with us, I hope. Of course you will. She'll stay with us, I hope. Of course you will. Where else? The time being at least, we're counting on it. Well, that's very kind, but I wasn't. I really I wasn't expecting it. Unless, of course, you prefer a hotel. No, that's not it. Just, well, I want to impo- not to impose. Oh, believe me, you're not. I'm, it's our pleasure, after all. It's our way of... In a way, you're part of the family, aren't you? Well, you know what I mean. And what's... And from that Barry Rodriguez has told us about you. We feel we know you already. <coughs> we've got a complete, we're not a complete stranger as far as we're concerned. Well, if you're sure, we would, would be disappointed if you didn't. So please, thank you. It's surprising how many Norwegians speak such good English. It's a second language for most of us. You've not been to this country before? No. Well, not since I was a small child anyway. Well, I'll have a room. I'm pleased that you like it. I hope you look, will be comfortable. Don't think there's any trouble about that. Well, may we call you Catherine? Of course, good. Well then, Catherine, I'll see you later. I must go back to the office for a while. You will not be home late, will you? By the far le- latest, please feel at home here. You're both very kind. I'll leave. Well, I'll leave you to unpack. I and you would perhaps like to take a shower. Anyway, come down when you're ready. Are you hungry? Not desperately. I will prepare something light for us. But, because you eat tonight, well, tonight, I think. Sounds great. Hello. Hello, Catherine. Oh, no. Hello. Oh, man, Marie Jarrell. Hello. Do I like it? It's very interesting. Well, who played it? Ingrid. Really? She's a professional artist? No, just said I'm a turn. What a good one, I think. Oh, yes, very talented. Is there any more of her work here? Sadly, no. Two or three years ago, my sister suddenly decided that none of her work was any good. So she took all the canvases out of the garden and burnt them. The only one that survived because I threatened never to speak to her again. She didn't keep it. Which is a good thing because now she's given up painting. Would you like a drink? Yes, thank you. Vodka, gin, vodka, rout, tonic. Stunning view. We know. We know it's strange. But back in England, you never think of Norway without seeing it covered in snow. But you know better than that, surely. I understand you're born here. In Oslo. Well, just, only just. I don't remember it at all. That's my father. What a strong face, yes, thank you. I don't know what I'm doing here. I have no right to be. I can't imagine why you're doing being so pleasant. Why should you do you be anything else? A total stranger inherits part of your father's state. You sent, you sent it that his situation was reversed. I couldn't even offer you any explanation of why I was in the wheel. Yes, I know. I met Dr. Israstein. In town, he told me. Where's the mystery to to us, too? That's why my, what my father wanted. Father, my sister, and I, Lars, are concerned. That's the end of the matter. Well, it's true. You ride here as strange to us. I hope, I hope, believe me, that when you leave, you'll be a friend. Thank you. What are your plans? Well, to be honest, just now, just now I'm looking for capital. I thought that putting a factory on the market would be a good way of raising some... Some rest of the property, that, that I don't know. Astrid's a good far distance. 
fair distance to London. A bit too far, I think, for a weekend cottage. Well, whatever you decide. I hope that once the formalities are completed, you'll stay on for a while. Lunch is ready. There's only, there's only a cold table. So there's no hurry, whether you feel like it. Do you want one of these? What is it? For a quintonic? Yes, thank you. Do you have any children? No. Lars and I decided to wait a while before starting family. First, we wish to enjoy our f- just being together. And there's plenty of time, of course. I'm just admiring your painting. I'm not very good, I'm afraid. But your sister tells me you don't paint anymore. No longer an instrument to me. Talk. Right. Cheers, cheers. Good luck. May you never move from this spot. You wait till you see Joe has the fam. And where the houses are, you now own, are. In the morning, I'll drive you out there. But first, I'll show the Kitfitch fam- factory. First, explain what is Kitfitch is, I hope. Sounds fairly disgusting. Dried, sorted cod. Processing has been a big industry along with the coast since as far back as the 1600s. The factory you inherited was the first business that my father brought. So the foundation stone, foundation stone, the whole Joel Industries group. That's where it would have stayed, shouldn't it? In the group, it's only a minor part of Joel's interests. And it's yours. I do as you wish. Are you sure you can spare the time to drive me around tomorrow? I don't want to be a nuisance. If you're not, it'd be my pleasure. I think you can manage at work without me a few hours. What do you do? I design furniture. You're sitting on one, my chairs. Do I design these? Mm. Do you like them? Yes. Who do you design for? For myself now. Since my father died, the factory is mine. Hope it's all right for you, eating at home. Henry thought we should take you to a restaurant. I uh, felt that well for your first evening. Uh, and you were right. That's much better than, than going anywhere. Tomorrow night we invite you to a few of the closest, our closest friends here to meet you. Well, you'll like them, I'm sure. I'll give you a chance to get some people Know some people in the regions are rather shy and reserved. With strangers, even the nearest and dearest, I sometimes think. Come on, then. Isn't going? Isn't anyone going to eat? Are you sure this is a lot of trouble for you? No, of course it isn't. I have generally an excuse to take a day off. So you see, you're giving me a favour. Well, this is it. A lot of fishes are supported. Thousands and thousands of kilos every day a year. Mr. Trenton, I've been general manager here for many years now, nine. My father fought... Very highly to him. Much to credit the way the factories have developed lately. It's due to him. Oh no, Mr. L was responsible for that. I merely followed instructions. Of course, I made some suggestions for improvements from time to time, but Mr. L never interfered from day-to-day running of the business. He left it entirely to me. You would like, like to work, oh, look over the works, I imagine? Yes, I would, thank you. Makes you wonder if there's any fish left in the sea. Yes, last year, nearly 100 million kilos of saltfish. One type of another was processed in Norway. I understand there's a lot of it is exported. Yes, it's nearly six per ten. It went, it's sent to Italy, Spain, Portugal, Brazil, Mexico, West Indies, and many countries, nearly 50. So you see the problem here is this area. We need to increase it in order to meet the demand. So next year, I intend to extend the plant. That is, of course, if you approve. Well, it sounds like a good idea. The final decision is not to, up to me, Mr. Turnham. is isn't my line of business. I think of deposing the factory, Mr. Rail. Perhaps you do me a favour. Yes, if I can. Very much like to buy it myself, but I will, of course, have consult the bank and negotiate a loan for them to do so. What amount will it be involved? Oh, a great deal, surely. Yes, I suppose so. The island belongs to me too, yes. The island, both houses. A land between them and on the other, either side. It used to be a farm many years ago, though. This is what, that's when it was called Hogamar Homan. Harren's Island. There's a lot of them over here. There, it's beautiful. It's from here that my father sold his boat on the day he was drowned. Oh, it's lovely. Was it? This picture. His portrait is my mother. My father commissioned it the year we were married. It was, she was nearly 20 years younger than he was. Only 33 when she died, just a week of my 10th birthday. You and Ingrid are both so alike. Some ways, perhaps, her name is Freya. How sad she would die so young. It was her choice. Don't, didn't Dr. Bergesdorf tell you she committed suicide? My father's personal papers have been removed, of course, because they were out of curiosity. I had a look to see if there's any reference to you or your parents, but there was nothing. So now this house has everything in it belongs to you. Not the portrait. You what? You want that? You want to have that? Surely. 
No, it was her father's. It belongs here. Ingrid, I do need, do not need a pay to write us of her. I don't realize this is your family home. Please don't feel like that. There's no reason for you to. It was never my family, not Ingrid's. Does the island have electricity? Yes, but no, there's no telephone over here. Here, there's, you're completely cut off from the outside world. Are keys here? Yes. How do you get across? There's a dinghy. Good. Shall we go then? You can, can, of course, but forgive me. I'm not comfortable for you. You see, it was mother house where he was alone. Place where she could be entirely on her own, wherever she wanted to be, living there. I haven't been to the island since. I don't think anyone in the family has. Not even my father. But you go ahead. I'll wait for you here. Of course not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. You must stay till July, June 23rd at least. What happens then? In the midst of the eve and a big celebration here in Norway. Festivities go on, on all night. Great fun. You must miss that. People will take their boats onto the field. The picnics on the beach. It's in the country somewhere. There's bonfires. Everywhere. The fireworks. Everyone sings and dances. And a good... Good many round all off with a very nasty hangover. How sweet of you. There's someone you, you're bound to meet soon or later. Hello, morning, Baran. Hello, Evan, Liv. Baran, hello, Evan. How are you? So much work, I cannot tell you. That's why I'm late. I'm sorry. But don't worry, Catherine. This is Baran Leva. Who? Hello. Good morning. Good evening, Mrs. Baran. Very pleased to meet you. We told you, I think. Baran is your family lawyer. Of course, I'm sorry. Should have contacted you as soon as I arrived. I'm glad you didn't. I haven't had a minute to spare since last day, last few days. Come to my office tomorrow morning at say seven o'clock. We we'll settle them. Would it be convenient? Yes, it'd be fine. Good. So, how are you liking Esfred? Thank you. Here you are. Thanks. So, uh, Sky, Sky. I have here. Um, oh, what? Uh, here you want to out to Jove Jeff, Hansen today? Yes. How do you think? What do you think of the property? Oh, it's a gorgeous spot. The Hamas was lovely. Do you, do you go across the island? No, we didn't have time. What a beautiful woman. Freya was. Oh, yes, of course, the portrait. But extremely beautiful. How sad that she died the way she did. I mean, she killed herself, Anne-Marie said. Yes, there must have been a terrible time, particularly for Anne-Marie and Ingrid. They were quite, both quite young. Yes, but it's difficult, difficult thing for anyone to cope with, children especially. Great shock for everyone. What else did Anne Marine tell you? Nothing. Just that her mother committed suicide. Well, she's not. She left no note to explain. She'd been ill for some long time, so a fit, so a fit of depression, perhaps. Who knows? But as far as Hadrubar was concerned, the question was irreverent. He had lost her. So knowing why she did that, what she did would have done nothing to ease the pain when he lived from there on. And now his doom has gone to let the dead. So let the dead bury the dead dead. That's best. That's best. Don't you agree? Who are you? What are you doing here? You must be the English woman, Catherine Durrell. Oh, yes, I am. You're trespassing. Possibly. I wasn't aware you already moved in. I haven't, but beside the point, this is my property. My name is Boston. And he's Boston. I'm a journalist in the new local newspaper. Spend some Emma Spinson. How about, how do you know who I am? Everyone in said knows who arrived. I think you come. And you, why you've come, I look, I look, I'm sorry, I know you're here. I would have asked permission. Didn't you see my car? Could be anyone. So so, I said, I'm sorry. What are you looking for in there? I followed up a ferry of mine. Oh, and that ferry is, what ferry is that? I don't believe how Javajaroli's death was an accident. I think he was murdered. <laughs>